شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته and welcome back to our weekly uh, session sponsored by Jumeirah Islamic Learning Center and myself uh, brother Ayaz Hausi and uh, it's great to be back and I know I took almost like three weeks or two weeks and a half uh, off due to Eid or well, I wasn't celebrating Eid that long but I just had to extend it a little bit for some other reasons. But Alhamdulillah, I think I was trying to get sorted out. Alhamdulillah. So I believe it's time for us to get back on track. Inshallah. Yeah. So uh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that uh, uh, we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every uh, <clears throat> blessing that we have. We need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving the opportunity of coming here. You know, and I always say it, you know, and and uh, I remember if I say that class what we're having now, we used to have this uh, back in the markaz in the in the Islamic Jumeirah Learning Islamic Center in Dubai. Um, before the pandemic, we used to have it there on site and uh, many people could not attend because of work, because no transport, maybe it was hard for them to come after Salat al Isha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy. So now we got no uh, we got no no excuse not to attend. You know, you might be driving, it's listening. You might be on your couch, listening, you might be sleeping, just put it on, just listen. You know, in ways of uh, when we look at the pandemic, what happened two years ago, uh, we did we did benefit a lot. Yeah, maybe some people did uh, had some kind of financial crisis during that time, and they have we have had some people that uh, have lost their the loved ones. We've got some people who has actually got their health deteriorated, and at the same time we've got you know uh, like how we call it in each and every situation there is a good and the bad. Yeah, for definitely we should always put in mind that whatever happened. Happen by the means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, And nothing shall afflict us except what Allah has written for us. When we have been afflicted with something, my brothers and sisters out there, it is either for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us go near to him, like what happened to the prophets, what happened to uh, the 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 salihun, the righteous and the pious, or we be afflicted by something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants our sin to be erased. And they're both good. They're both good. That's why the Prophet Muhammad said, li It is so strange about the affair of the mu'min. If something good happened to him, he thanks Allah. If something bad happened to him, he thanks he's he's patient. Why? Because when something bad happened to you, my brother and sister, than myself. We know from the verse I just mentioned now, nothing shall happen to us except by the wills of Allah. Isn't For you know that if this test is being put on me, this calamity is being afflicted upon me, there's good in it. Either Allah is getting my rank and my position higher near him like what happened to the righteous or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to enter Jannah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to enter Jannah but by those small sins that you have it has to be removed here before you meet him صح? your headache that you have your tooth pain that you have your back pain that you have, your eye ache or pain what you have. And Nabi said, even if a thorn prick you inside your fingers or whatever, except that Allah is forgiving your sins. 
That is why whenever something like this happens, what do we say? Oh, Alhamdulillah. You trip, you fall down, oh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, you get some kind of stress, distress, sadness, whatever. Alhamdulillah. Don't be like the people who when they trip, they fall down, or something bad happened to them, what do they do? They say the F word. Oh. They start stressing and blaming Allah Azza wa Jal. How many good deeds I have done? And now look, look at my hal. How many good deeds I have done? And now look at my, at my situation. Ajib. Just give me one moment. Yeah. In regards to what we've been talking about, when it comes to thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for each and every matter of your life, now look at. I'll make the coffee. <laughs> Let me just mute everyone. Just a quick reminder: keep yourself muted all the time. In regards to thanking Allah Azza wa and I always emphasize upon it, because Wallahi, we are not in a position where we can think of the ni'mah of Allah Azza wa Jal. We have, or I have had many friends and many people over the past two years, or let's say for the past year, that lecture of speaking about the new Islamic year, and I still remember when, the, when, the, when was the last time, I said that lecture. That was one year ago. And one year ago, and many people that we know listened to the lecture. Many people benefited from the lecture. And many people is not hated in the lecture. Especially in the masjid. Especially in the khutbah, I remember. When you look at them, they're not here. Because let me tell you something, Al-Umur, Yamur. The years go, and whatever happened today, it's not going to happen tomorrow. What you just did now, two, two minutes ago, you're not going to get it anymore. That is why it is said that uh, if you do not use your time properly, if you do not use your time properly, the time will cut you like a safe. The time is like a sword. If you don't you if you don't cut the time, the time will cut you. <laughs> but when you look at the time, why I'm saying this is because when you look behind, you're like Subhanallah. The problem is we don't look behind as love Muharram. We have been programmed to look behind at the Gregorian calendar. So when January comes, or December comes, we look behind you like, wow, it has gone very quickly. But when you look at the Muharram, you're like, whoa, subhanAllah, it has gone very quickly. The time is still the same, but the time will go, the time will run, we will grow, we will grow stronger, we will grow weaker, we will get shaver, old, we will go into the grave, generation and generation gonna come, and the only time when the time is stopped is when Israfil will blow the thorn. When Israfil will blow the trumpet, this is the time when you feel the time I'm going to stop. But I come and I go. You come and you go. We go where? We go to the Barzakh. Ah, oh. we go to the Barzakh. And the people carry on generation over generation. So that is why when we have the time, it is something that we need to know that it is something very precious.
Because let me tell you something, there's nothing that you should be concerned about when the new year comes. I mean, if you look at that, you know, we see people, I mean, in general, people, when the new year comes, you know, they want to party. It's okay. That's the culture of the people. And we're not saying anything haram. Don't, don't get me wrong. People now, they want to have a gathering. They get very excited. The new year's coming. But, but at the same time, my brothers and sisters, the more new year you celebrate, the more you're getting nearer to that time where you're going to leave the dunya. That is why I find it a little bit strange to find people make proper big party about their birthdays. And then what happened when you actually sit and think about it, they're getting near to that age where they're going to leave the dunya. There are people happy to be old, and there are people who regret to be old. So each and every day of our life, we just need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very something not easy to do. But our daily life, if we renew our niya, it actually shukra lillah. I wake up, I say bismillah. I drink something, I say bismillah. I eat something, I say bismillah. Uh, whatever I do, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. You're thanking Allah. Even though you are, you're just remembering Allah, it's a thank to Allah. Al-dhikrullah, huwa shukrullah. Al-dhikrullah, it is shukra lillah. Your fatherly prayers, it's shukra lillah. You're sharing and you're caring, it's shukr lillah. You're looking at someone with a manner of what Allah Azza wa Jal love, it's shukr lillah. For this tells you that our life, daily life, is actually thanking Allah Azza wa Jal, but we need to renew our intention. So when we think about the new year, 14, wait a minute, I actually forgot the year again today. You know, subhanAllah, I was, I was giving the, the khutbah and I forgot. <laughs> 1443, exactly. I was giving the khutbah last week and the year is 1442. And I was going to say 1422. Two. Like, subhanAllah, insan, insan, we just insan. Nessia, we always tend to forget. And I was giving the khubba and I was about to say, we are, we have just left the year of 1422. Two. Well, actually 1442. So 1422. And Ajib, I was just about to say this. And I was like, no, skip it here because I'm not really sure. Just get confused. But anyway, it's been 1443 four, years. Since the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated from Mecca to Medina. Yeah. 1,443 years since the Prophet sallam migrated from Mecca to Medina. Now look at this. This is what's good about it. When you, give a when you want to give a lecture, when you want to give a story, take out the lesson out of it. Because you want to know the story of Hijrah and Miraj, uh, the uh, Hijrah. Go on Google, you will find them. But not many people can actually deduce the lesson and then implement it in today's world. Today's Look at this one. Uh, 1,443 years since the Prophet Muhammad passed away. Sorry, the Prophet Muhammad made the Hijrah. So it's after that 10 years, the Prophet had passed away. So one, four, three, three. The Prophet Muhammad has sent them passed away. Great, no problem. So when you look at it, just think of this properly now. What? A little bit of math, mathematics. The people who passed away, 1,000, 
400 years ago. These people who passed away, let's say, for example, 1,300 uh, years ago, let's say there was Abu Bakr passed away, Umar passed away, Uthman passed away, uh, Abu, Abu Hanifa passed away, and uh, all these ulama that we know passed away. Yeah? They lived in the dunya for 80 years. Those people back there, huh? They live in the dunya for how many years? 80 years? 60 years? صح? 70 years? Oh, no, no. Now, and then they died. Since that time, they died. And now it's been 1,400 years. So 70 years they were in the dunya. And 1,400 years, they are in the Barzakh. They are in the Barzakh. What is Barzakh? The life in the Qabr. The life in the Qabr. And now look at it. They live for 70 years, 80 years in the dunya. And now it's been like 1,400 years, they are still in the barzakh, they're waiting for Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And I ask you a question now, question to be asked. If I'm going to live in the dunya for 70 years, and in the barzakh, I'm going to live probably like 2,000 years, so which life do we give priority? Think about it. Hmm. Which life do we give priority? So now, unfortunately, we give priority to this life. We work day and night to get a house. We work day and night to get a beautiful car. We work day and night for the future of our kids. We work day and night in order to get what we wish and yearn for. And we know that this dunya is temporary. So now when you think about it, which one take more preference? Hayya or hayya dunyawiyya? Is the life of the dunya take preference to the life of the barzakh? Uh, We're not talking about Jannah Jahannam. We're not talking about Yawm Al-Qiyamah. We're talking about the hayya barzakhiyya. In the life between the life and the Yawm Al-Qiyamah. The life between the death and Yawm Al-Qiyamah is called Barzakh, in the grave. It's another world, no? In the Barzakh, in the Barzakh, according to Hadith, there will be a man who will come, and then it will be uh, the man, you know, the Hadith says, uh, handsome man, going to come in a shape of the beautiful man, it will come, and then it will be there at the time of the question and answer in the grave. And then when it will be asked, who are you? And then the hadith says, for verily I am the good deeds that you used to do in the dunya. For verily I will stay with you in the qabr until yawm al-qiyamah to keep you company. Hmm, that's in the qabr. In the qabr, you can see your place in Jannah morning and evening and then you keep on saying ya allah make the day of yawm al qiyamah comes i can go there may allah make us among them in the qabr you smell the one of the most beautiful smell in the qabr when you look left and right it's not the qabr that we see when we dig the grave it will be as if until your eyesight reach this is going to be your your width of your, of your qabr. Qabr, you, re, you leave, you sleep, you eat. This is the hayya barzakhiyya. That for the good people and the opposite for the people who has gone, who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who innovate, people who go against Allah azza wa jal. 
That's the opposite. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our life in darzakh, hayat and tayyibah, a good and beautiful life. This is what we want. So again, when we speak about the new year, we speak about al-a'mar. Al-a'mar, our years that has gone by and how we can better that years. For it, which one are better to focus more? Haya barzakhiya or haya dunyawiya? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us meet the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the, 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 the a'mal of Ahl Jannah easy. Ameen bi imillah ta'ala. Al Hijri. Okay, now we start. Now we're starting. Astaghfirullah. That's always. Always oh, introduction, always get into like 35 minutes or whatever. So we get that quickly, inshallah. And the hijri, not too far from what we spoke about last week in the khutbah. And inshallah, probably tomorrow I might go a bit more into deep detail. Tomorrow, 4.30. Uh, and I'm going to send, inshallah, the, 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 the link and the group. Uh, 4.30, we have another lecture tomorrow in regards to Hijri. In regards to Hijri, let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. First of all, we know very well how Islam started. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Nabi Ummi, he was someone who didn't know how to read and write. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose the Prophet Sallam, someone who's illiterate, so that People will not say that he wrote the Quran or he's coming up with those mu'jizah. So and Nabi Sallallahu since he's small, he was an orphan. He started working with his uncle until he grew up and he married Khadija radiallahu anha. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu lived his hayat. And back in the days, but they, they had, they had the month they had the days. Like for example, day, Yamul Ahad, Yamul Thnan, Yamul Thulatha, Yamul Arbi'ah, Yamul Khamis, Yamul Jum'ah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that they used to have in the Arab world. And they used to have the month. Muharram, Safar, Rabi'ul Awal, Rabi'ul Thani, Jamadu Al Awal, Jamadu Al Thani, Rajab, Sha'aban, Ramadan, Dhul Qi'da, Dhul Hijjah, Shawad, Dhul Qi'da, Dhul Hijjah. This used to be there. And they used to follow. One month according to the moon, another month according to the moon. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know very well that we, we go according to the moon. Because Allah says, yes, When they ask you about the moon, tell them the moon is about the time. To know for people to know about the time when the month is starting, when the month is finishing. Now, if you look at the moon now, mashallah, it's the third and the fourth of the Hijjah. So you could see the moon, it is three or four days moon. So back in the day, they would know this is how they would know the dates and they would carry on. So the day was known, the month was known, but the year they were not keeping track. The year, they were not keeping track. So how they used to know the year back in the days? According to the major event of that year. The major event of a particular year, for example. That's why they always say the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the year of elephant. What is the year Amul Fil? What happened to the elephant? That was the first time the Arabs saw the elephant in, the, in, in, in Mecca. Where elephant was coming? From where? From Yemen. How? They never seen elephant. We're like, what is this? Somewhere from space or something? Like an animal with a big trunk? <laughs> that was the first time they came to Mecca. And they came as a troop in order to destroy the Kaaba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them with small pebbles from the from the from the birds holding small pebbles they will throw on the head of the 
of the elephant and they would die. That was the year the Prophet ﷺ was born. So that was a big event. The year of the elephant, Amr Fil. The year of the elephant, number one. Number two, the year of Badr. Because that was the year the Battle of Badr happened. The year of Uhud, that was the year the, uh, the, uh, the Battle of Uhud happened. The year of Huzun, the year of sorrow, that was the year the Prophet Muhammad lost his wife and uncle. So they call it the year of sorrow. So if ever, let's say for example, uh, 2001, we don't have any number, you call it the year of World Trade Center. If for example, uh, 2019, we don't have a name, you will call it oh, 2020, the, the year of pandemic or corona, whatever. The main event and what happened in the world or in that particular place. So this is how it used to be by the name, the year of so and so, but the number wasn't there. So what happened is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi passed away. Abu Bakr came, he passed away. Umar bin Khattab became, you know when Umar bin Khattab came in, subhanAllah, he changed many things in Islam. Not the, the Sharia of Islam, he opened Islam more. He developed Islam more. Yes or no? Fa, what happened is, when he came, we know Umar bin Khattab, he came, he the one who, who brought the, he introduced policemen. Who introduced policemen in the world? Who introduced security in the world? The first and foremost, Umar bin Khattab. He was like, okay, you people, you want to drink khamar? This is how it started. Huh? The people, what happened? They will always look. Like Umar bin Khattab, what he would do, Umar bin Khattab, subhanAllah, in the night, he would go and do patrolling himself. He would go and check if any people are not sleeping because of their hunger. Umar bin Khattab. He would see if anyone is doing something that he's not happy with. So he would go patrolling in the night. So he was like, and sometimes there were some people, what they were doing, they were uh, drinking khamar. They would drink khamar in the night. You know, sharab. Uh, uh, wine. So guess what? You're like, okay. So now these people, they're drinking wine in the night. I heard, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to I'm going to enforce something which is called the policeman. All right, I don't need to be there. So if they don't fear, Allah make them fear those people so they can stop. So this is the one it started. Policemen, guard, security, at the time of Umar bin Khattab. And there are many things he came up with. He's the one who went to Umar, uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, let's go, let's go put all the Quran together. But anyway, we get back to the subject is that Umar bin Khattab, he came up with the writing of the year. Because Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, who was in Iraq, he was getting a letter from Umar. But the letter was not dated. There was no date in the letter. So Umar bin Khattab would send letter to Basra in Iraq and tell the Amir over there, do this, do that, what's happening, everything, okay. But it was not dated, there was no date. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, what did he do? He sent a letter to Umar bin Khattab, Ya, ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, listen. We are getting, listen, the Romans, the Persian, what they're doing, they have their dates. Why don't we have dates as well? So Umar bin Khattab like, okay, that's a very good idea. So what he did, he brought the people together, the Sahaba. He was like, okay, the Sahaba made وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ This one makes you a very good leader. Think about other people, come up, brainstorm something, and then he was like, okay, listen, we need to come up with Islamic year. We need to come up with the Islamic year. We have Muharram Safar. 
but we don't have a year where we can actually follow. Then the Sahaba said, why don't we follow the Romans? You know, the Romans, like 2021. Uh, they said, no. Why don't we follow the Persians? Al-Furs. Sahaba was like, mm -mm, no. Then they were like, why don't we start our own calendar from the prophethood of the Prophet ﷺ when he got the Nubuwa? And then another one said, why don't we start the calendar when he passed away? And then Umar bin Khattab said, and Uthman bin Affan, they were like, let's start the calendar when he made a hijrah from Mecca to Medina. Why? He starts from hijrah from Mecca to Medina. 13 years is already gone in Mecca of prophethood. But no, Umar bin Khattab and Uthman bin Affan, and they all agreed to it. Like, you know what? We're going to start the hijri. You know when? At the time he made the hijrah. Because at the time he made the hijrah, that is the time when Islam changed. That is the time Islam changed. It's the law Islam, it did not change in regard to the Sharia. Ah. It's, it, 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 it changed in regard to the living and the society of the Muslim. Because that was the time where Islam started to spread everywhere. That is the time where truth was prevailed from the falsehood at the time of Hijrat al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they all came up with this idea like, all right, okay, so that means we're going to start our first year number one as since the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made Hijrah, that was almost like 17 years ago when they came up with the idea. Allahu Akbar. But now it tells you this is where we come to know. This is where we come to know where the Hijri started. And until today, until today, that was still going on. So now when we say it is 1443, 1443 years, it is since the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has actually migrated from Mecca to Medina. From Mecca to Medina. Great. What we want to speak about as well is in regards to the lesson of what we deduced in the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like how I said, tomorrow I'm gonna to go a little bit more deeper because we're gonna have almost like two hours and a half. But now I've got like half an hour left. The main lesson that we deduced from the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number one, like how I said, is not only the hijrah the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he stayed in mecca under the persecution of Quraysh for 13 years how many years 13 years and now guess what you know when you are when, when you are sad or when you've been afflicted by calamity and you know Allah Azza wa is going to help you out. You know that Allah Azza is going to remove that calamity from you. That pain and stress and sadness from Allah. You know Allah is going to remove that from you. But the waiting period of it, when you wait for it, Subhanallah, maybe you lost your job. You're experiencing some kind of financial crisis, but you know that in the out of every difficulty, Allah is going to bring you ease. So by the time you are waiting for the ease, this is what Allah wants to see what to do at this time. Your job has been taken away from you. Tasbur. Your love has been taken away from you. 
Uh, you've been put in a place where you're not supposed to be put. Be patient. People are making vulm upon you. People have taken your rights. Be patient. By the time you are patient, my brothers and sisters, this is the time when you know that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to open your way. How do you actually comport yourself in this time? There are some people who will be saying, Alhamdulillah. It's hard, Alhamdulillah. At that time, some people will be like, man, I can't do it. Allah is not helping me. Allah is not helping me. So there are two kinds of people, grateful and ungrateful people. If you were to look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for 13 years, he tried to send his people to Habash, to Ethiopia, to migrate. It didn't work. Again, second time, send them to migrate. It didn't work. He kept on waiting for Allah Azza wa to open his way. And he himself, after the death of, after the death of Khadija and the death of, of uh, his uncle, maybe he couldn't stay in Mecca anymore, you know? His wife passed away. He, couldn't, he decided to go to Taif. Let me get a better life in Taif. I go make da'wah over there. Even over there, before he entered, he was pelted. He had to leave. So at that moment, what do you say? This is the moment Allah wants to see. But then after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, after 13 years, Allah Azza wa revealed to him, now you can migrate to a place where there are a lot of gardens with palm trees. That was Medina, Munawwara, Yathrib. After 13 years, huh? 13 years, Allah Azza wa Jal opened his way. Allah is going to open your way, my brother and sister, but you just need to be patient. And the patient time is the time when you are actually waiting for the faraj. It is the time when you're waiting for Allah to remove that from you. This is the best of time. Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam for 17 years, he was on the bed. Nabi, Prophet, Messenger, loved by Allah, he was on the bed. His family left him. He lost his crops. He lost his wealth. He lost his animals. He lost everything. Even the only one who stood by him was his wife. Even people couldn't come and visit him because of how deteriorated his body was. People left him. But after 17 years, but he knew. He knew. وَأَيُّبَ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِي الضُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ What did he say? وَأَيُّبَ إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِي الضُّرُّ he didn't say, oh Allah, give me shifa. <laughs> he didn't say, oh Allah, give, give. Ya Allah, give. He said, oh Allah. Oh Allah, for verily harm has afflicted me. Wa anta arhamur rahimin. And you're the best of the, of, you're the best of those who show mercy. Fastajabna lahu. Fastajabna lahu. Allah Azza wa replied to his call and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him shifa. For though these 17 years, these seven, did he actually complain to Allah? La wallahi. Straight away, Allah Azza wa gave him his, his health. Allah returned back his wealth. Allah returned back his family. Allah returned back all his wealth and his richness and his cows and his agriculture and he got back what he got. He was waiting. Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. Allah. They took his son from him, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. His, his eyes became, he became blind because he kept on crying. But he never gave up. He knew. He kept on saying, فَصَبْرٌ jamil. عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ بِهِمْ جَمِيعًا 
He said, فصبر جميل. Sabr is beautiful. Uh, we know sabr, what he meant is that the reward of patience is, is great. But we know patient in itself, patient in itself is murwa. It's bitter. It's hard. It's pain. It's easy for people to say, sabr, sabr, ya akhti. You know, just, just be patient. It's easy to say, but the person who's feeling it, he knows what he's going through. But when we look at ourselves, when we look at Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, they took his son. And they, took, they threw his son. He didn't know where his son was. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept his son all the way in Egypt. He became the minister. And after how many years? Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam saw back his son. But sabrun jameel. Patience is beautiful. When did it come beautiful? When you reap the reward after it, and then you look behind you like, subhanAllah. If I wanted to be patient, I wouldn't have got what, I, what I'm getting now. That's sabr. When you are fasting, you are sabr. You want to eat, you want to drink. Tasbur. You're patient. You wake up in the morning for Salat al-Fajr, you're patient. It's hard. You have some money and then you want to give money outside to the pool. Everybody love money. I love money, you love money. Nobody can come and say, no, I don't love money. We all love money. But when you're taking that money outside and giving it to the pool, sabr. You don't see the money now, but Allah is going to give it to you in another different ways, even though here or in the Akhirah. So this is how it is. Therefore, a sabr is the first lesson that we deduce from the hijrah. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got the revelation, now he has to do hijrah. Before that, he already sent Mus'ab bin Umair, Abu Salama, he sent them to Medina to teach them about Islam. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now, he chose Abu Bakr to go with him. And choosing of the companion, we spoke about that a lot. We know that if the Prophet وسلم, has chosen Abu Bakr to be his companion on that journey, that means he has held Abu Bakr in high esteem. That means he has the respect that he has for Abu Bakr. He didn't have it for anyone else. Abu Bakr radiallahu an. You know, when they came and asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya, Ya, Ya Nabi Allah, who do you love the most? Who do you love the most, Ya Rasul Allah? He said, uh, Aisha. He said, no, 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 from the man, Abuha. He said, no, no, her father. <laughs> so Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved Aisha. And love Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But there was something special in them. Why does he? Why did he love Aisha? Because of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Because the trust. Because the trust that he had in Abu Bakr, he gave him the the nickname as Siddiq. What is Siddiq? The truthful one. Wallahi, no one over here would want to befriend someone who is a liar. No one would want to befriend someone who is a liar. No matter how poor a person is, no matter how unattractive someone is, but once you have got the, 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 the confidence and the trust of someone, you love him. Confidence and trust is something very, 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 very important. Once this is lost, there are many things that you can lose in this dunya. Trust is very important. If it breaks, it's very hard to mend. But the Prophet had this with Abu Bakr, so he chose him. Therefore, you all over here, before you choose someone as a friend, you choose someone as a Sadiq, as a Sadiq or Sadiq, you call it. You want, to, you want to teach your kids how to choose a friend. Let them understand, first of all, what is trust. If you can trust someone, 
if you can trust someone and you know that in every situation they're going to be on my side they are the one that you can be next to every time they are the one who can sacrifice their life for you they are the one who can actually sacrifice many things in order for your dean in order for you to be a happy person because the friend that is with you today, he might not be with you tomorrow. A friend is a precious element in your life. A friend, I'm not talking your brother, I'm not talking about your sister, I'm not talking about your siblings or your, or your uncle or your cousin, whoever. These people today, tomorrow, they can go. Trust me. Your brother and your sister today and tomorrow, they can go. They get their life. They have their own ways. Either they speak to you or they don't speak to you. Or they got a problem because of inheritance. You took their money, the patati, all this stuff. But a friend who is really trustworthy, wallahi, and I say wallahi, you will love him and he will love you and you will benefit from him and he will benefit from you in this dunya and the akhirah. How many people I have seen who passed away? They died. It's not their brother and their sister that go and visit the grave. Huh? It's their friends from the masjid. How, 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 how do you, how do you think about that? How, how do you think about this? A good friend will love you in this world while you're alive and while you're dead, while you pass away. The one who you're gonna see fine next to your grave, most of the time you're gonna find the one whom you really love as a good friend and love you as a good friend. And the one that you're going to look for in Jannah, if you don't find him, is going to be your friend. And I said that a couple of times, even in my last khutbah. Your brothers, we don't have any hadith that your brother is going to look for you. Or your mother is going to look for you. Or whoever from your family. But your friend, the one who was, who was with you in the dunya, the one who are making dua for you when you are in your grave, the one who will be looking for you on Yom Al-Qiyamah when you'll be put in Jannah, the one who will be looking for you, he'll be like, Ya Allah, for verily, Muhammad, Abdullah, Fatima, Zainab, Ya Allah, they used to fast together. We used to pray together. We used to give sadaqah together. We used to do this together. Ya Allah, I don't see them. It's your friend. And Allah will tell them, go in, go in Jahannam. If they say, la ilaha illallah, remove them and bring them here, put them in Jannah. <laughs> Who? Your friends. So now the lesson that we deduce from Abu Bakr, that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, took Abu Bakr as a friend because he was Siddiq. He was a trustworthy person. How many people, you yourself now, when you think about it, you could be 35 years old, you could be 40 or 50 years old, or you can be 17 years old, listen to me now, and you look behind, you're like, yeah, I know that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that sister, you know, I know, it was okay, you know, he was okay, or she was okay, and then this what happened, that happened, and then, you know, uh, my money got stolen, and this got stolen, and this poke behind my back, and then they sold me just like this, and they, wow. You start thinking about it. And then there's only one or two person in your life that stayed with you. When you think about them, you're like, yeah. The reason why I still like that person, that friend of mine, is because he kept the trust. He kept the promise. He was with me day and night whenever I was in need of a companion. They are the only one that Allah will put barakah in your relationship simple the love increase and increase and increase and never decrease so my brothers and sisters out there before you take a friend think very well 
Because these friends are going to be for you in this world and the akhirah. Bi'idnillahi ta'ala. The third lesson that we may deduce from the hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he took Abu Bakr and then he took another guide with him and then they went towards Medina. Usually to go towards Medina you had to go towards the east but on that day they went towards the west to deceive the Quraysh. But they knew. People followed them. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa went towards the mountain of uh, Jabal uh, Thor, Ghar Thor. In the mountain towards Mecca, where the Prophet Muhammad sallam went, and he and Abu Bakr went in the, in the, with a cave in there. For Nabi Sallam and Abu Bakr, they stayed in that cave for three days. Three days. Abu Bakr and the Prophet Sallam stayed in that cave for three days. Did they get fed up? No. What was happening? At that time, the Quraysh came on top of the mountain. Abu Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, if those Quraysh were to look down, they would see us. The Nabi Sallallahu said, don't worry. Why do you worry when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the third one of us? Huh? Don't worry. Wallahu thalithuhum. Fa... إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولِ صَاحِبِ لَيْتَحْ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَعْنَا Do not fear, do not grieve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. Allahu Akbar. Again, a friend. A friend is someone who always give you positive. Positivity. A friend is someone who always bring you, make you think good about Allah Azza wa and yourself. A friend is someone who always get you toward the straight path. Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallam told Abu Bakr, no worries, Allah is with us. And they never seen. It is even said that the Prophet Muhammad sallam was, was sleeping on the lap of Abu Bakr. The Prophet ﷺ was sleeping on the lap of Abu Bakr. Subhanallah. You know, in the cave, the of holes. The of holes. But Abu Bakr saw a small snake peeping out. Snake or scorpion peeping out. But Abu Bakr عن, did not want to wake up the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Bakr did not want to wake up the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What did he do? He put his toe of his foot and he shut. <laughs> and he shut the hole with his toe of his foot in order for the snake or for the scorpion to come out and prick the Prophet Sallallahu That was in pain. Abu Bakr Radhi started to Wimper. Wimper means like start to cry a little bit. Cry and cry because of the pain, but he didn't want the Prophet to wake up. Look at this. We call it a friendship. So the tears came on the beard of the Prophet of, of, of Bakr. And then the tears went all the way and fell on the face of the Prophet. And then he woke up. And then he came to know what happened. Subhanallah. Protection. Caring and loving. These are the things what you see, mashallah, when it comes to the hijrah. Bits by bits, if we were to go and take out lesson and, and, and apply that in today's world, subhanallah. Each and every event of the Prophet there's, there's ibar. There is lesson to be deduced from subhanallah. And there are more. At the same time, 
you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr and the Prophet sallam, they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they went into the cave. They're not just like, they were not just like, okay, you know what? We put our trust in Allah and then we don't do anything. La, fi'l al-asbab is very important. They went, they hid into the cave, and then they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did the Quraysh see them? La, wallah, they didn't see them. No, Shafu. Why? Because they put their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. They were able to go from Mecca to Medina in seven days. Well, the whole journey took 10 days, but three days in the Ghar, in the cave. Seven days, it took them to walk and come back. No, to walk, just to go there. Because he put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and Abu Bakr left the cave, and then they went to Medina, sent itself without any difficulty. Ajib. For this is something that we really need to understand. When you put your trust in Allah for each and every matter of your life, in regards to your work, in regards to your upbringing, in regards to your, uh, to your cold, the affairs of the house, in regards to, to, to your sickness, in regards to what, your business, Akhi, put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Today I was speaking to someone. And for very lean, you put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, it is sufficient. Because when you plan something, you decide something, you intend something, Allah wants to see that intention. How do you put that intention into the concept of tawakkul? How do you put your intention into the concept of tawakkul on Allah? Musa alayhi salatu wassalam, he took the people Bani Israel from Egypt, walking towards Palestine. Ooh, look at that. He had the Bani Israel going with him towards Palestine. In front of him, there was the river Nile. Where could he go? On the right side, there was the mountain. The left side, there was mountain. And behind him, there was the army of Fir'aun. You're going to crush now. In front, the river of Nile. Behind, the army of Fir'aun, left and right of mountain. They got nowhere to go. Sandwich, khalas, ba'as salam. One of the people from Bani Israel said, Inna la mudrakun. Qala kalla, inna ma'i rabbi sayahdeen. They said, oh, Musa, khalas, we're done. Finish. Fir'aun is going to catch us now. Finish. He said, Kalla. Inna ma'ya Rabbi sayhdeen. Allah Azza wa is with me. My tawakkal upon Allah. And Allah is going to do something. I didn't sit and asking Allah's help. I did make an effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him. Fadrib bi asak al-bahar. Fan falaqa fa kana kullu firqin ka tawd al-azim. Allah told him, now, Musa, take your staff and hit, the, and hit the sea. The sea opened. They went through the sea, and then they looked behind. When Fir'aun's army came, the sea came back in. How? Why? The tawakkal upon Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why I always told that person who's speaking to today that tawakkal, the tawakkal is gharib. The plan of Allah is gharib. The plan of Allah is something that you, it's unpredictable. You might like something. You might intend something. You don't know how it's going to happen, how to do it, but Allah has his own plan. Allah has his own plan. So whenever you intend something and then you put that intention in the tawakkal concept, Wallahi, Allah will bring only khair in it. Allah will bring only goodness in it. Wallahi. So therefore, this is one of the lessons that we deduce from the uh, hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in that hijrah there are many things we're going to speak about tomorrow as well and one of the things that I mean would like to speak about is when they entered Medina 
When they entered Medina, what was the first thing that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did? Was not to build his house. Was to build a masjid. Because the masjid, my brothers and sisters, this is the, the parliament of the society. The parliament of the society. It is the, the masjid is the place where you pray. Masjid, sajda, a place where you make sujood. Masjid, you pray. Masjid is a place where you, you do. You study. Well, the Sahaba used to come and study. Masjid is a place where you go and seek for help. They had Ashab al Sufha, Sufha. The poor people back in the day, they used to go to the masjid. And Nabi Sallallahu made his more accommodation for them in the masjid. They want and seek, they want and sought shelter in the masjid. The masjid is a place where people come in and brainstorm their ideas in order to have a better society. The parliament, like how we call it now. A masjid is a place where people come and study like a university. And a masjid is a place where there's any kind of activity that needs to be done from the, for the society, it has to leave and depart from the masjid. This is a masjid. A masjid is not just to come in and pray and close and go. That is why nowadays, unfortunately, we are not having a proper attachment to the masjid. Because we come to the masjid, we had to leave quickly because they had to close the masjid. We come in the masjid, quickly we pray, we had to leave quickly because they had to close the masjid. But this is something that not the real purpose of the masjid. So the masjid is like how we have it still in some countries, mashallah. The masjid is left open. But of course, under supervision of trustworthy person, knowledge, youth center, ladies center, Muslim court counseling session, uh, studies, uh, entertainment area, even in the masjid. I mean, I mean, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. We gave, there was some director of the masjid came and I gave a lecture about how do we actually uh, uh, build the masjid. Well, I told them to put Wi Fi in the masjid. They want to put Wi Fi, so you put Wi Fi in the masjid now. You got to put Wi Fi. And that was several masjid was going to be built in, uh, in South India, in Kerala. Why? Because if those kids who are less fortunate, not going to get Wi-Fi in the masjid, they're going to go to a cyber. They're going to go to a cafe. You're opening the doors for them. Therefore, we as Muslim, we have the masjid khair. And we make another hall as well for the youth to come, they play, entertain themselves, they read a library, they want Wi-Fi, you got it here. This is how the Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, masjid used to be. Where the, the people of Habash, they used to practice the archery next to the masjid of the Prophet where Aisha was looking at them. The Prophet Muhammad put his cheeks with the cheek of Aisha عنها, together. They were watching the archery of the Habashi, people who came from Ethiopia. And then the Prophet ﷺ hold her. And then the Prophet said, Aisha, did you finish? Like, no, Ya Rasulullah. He's holding her. Yeah, Aisha, did you finish? Yes, Ya Rasulullah, I finished. Then Rasulullah put, her, put him down. You know, his cheek to the cheek of Aisha. And they're what? They're watching the, 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 the training of the Habashi. So that the masjid. But the third thing that the Prophet Muhammad did when he entered Medina was what? He built the masjid. <laughs> Why? Not just to pray and then leave. It became the center of the society. And then later he got his house. And then later, the another uh, last point I would like to make before we leave is al muakha which tomorrow I may emphasize a bit more. al muakha bima'ana brotherhood and sisterhood. So now we have the Muhajirun and the Ansar in Mecca, in Medina. Muhajirun and the Ansar. So the Ansar, they are the people, the helpers, who are the people of Medina, 
Muhajirun are the expat that came from Mecca. But the Prophet Muhammad didn't look at any color. He didn't look at any tribe. He didn't like any dialect or language. He was like one Muhajir and one Ansar. One Ansar is going to take one Muhajir and live together. The, the Ansar, they were so, so kind. They were so kind that they were sharing their house. They were sharing their animal. They were sharing their food. And we even have reports that some of the Ansar, that they get, they're like, Ya Rasulullah, I have two wives and I can give them one of them. <laughs> this is it, because that was the norm. That was how extent they wanted to help the Muhajirun. So I tell you, Al-Mu'akha, brotherhood and sisterhood, how important it is in Islam. You don't need to look at who is he and who is she or whoever, where they're from, which culture, but all this stuff. No. Nahnu ummah wahida. We are one ummah created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Created from the dust, and we're going to go back to the dust, and we're going to be removed from the dust, and then go to Jannah bi idnillahi ta'ala. So therefore, there should not be any, any differentiation or racism of feeling and think and thought in Islam. Abadan, never. So this is what happened. They even took Bilal radiallahu an. Uh, it tells you al-mu'akha. Al-mu'akha means, come from the word ukhuwa, akhi. Al-ukht, sister, sister, brother, brother. So all oh, they came and then they made these kinds of uh, brotherhood and sisterhood love. And uh, one other thing, this is only three or four uh, important uh, lesson we have deduced today from the hijrah of the Prophet Sallam. Bidinillah ta'ala tomorrow at 4.30, 4.45. Inshallah, we're going to send the the new link for, for that. We're going to speak more in detail about it in the Ta'ala. And in regards to uh, Muharram, we know that Muharram is the first month of the Islamic calendar. It is a sacred month in which we know that the sacred, the three consecutive sacred months, which is the Qa'da, the Hijjah, and Muharram, and the Rajab. And Muharram is the first month of the Islamic calendar. And the Muslims decided that Muharram be the first month. So they were still, they were discussing. So which month do we make at the first month? All right, we've got the year now. So which month we say the first month? We've got the year. So then some of the Sahaba was like, let's make Ramadan the month number one. No, let's make Rabi' al-awwal. The month from number, number one, because in Rabi' al awwal, the Prophet Sallam made hijrah to the to, to Medina. And Nabi Sallam did not make hijrah in Muharram. Think properly. And Nabi Sallam did not make hijrah in Muharram. He made hijrah in Rabi' al awwal. So, like, okay, the Prophet Sallam even passed away in Rabi' al awwal. And he made hijrah in Rabi' al awwal. Let's start the first. The first month of Rabi' al-Awwal. But then later on, they came to the conclusion that no, we're going to start the month number one, which is we have January number one. We have Muharram number one as Muharram. First month Muharram. Why? Because the month prior to Muharram is the Hijjah. We just left now. Because in the Hijjah, we have completed the five pillars of Islam. صح? We pray, and then we had Ramadan, we fast, and then we had the Hijjah, we make our Hajj, the fifth pillar of Islam, خلاص. Out of the year, the last year, month is the Hijjah, we made the Hajj, خلاص, السلام. The next month, Muharram, it is the first month. And then they agreed to this one, and then this is one of the months, which is called the sacred month. So the, the month of uh, uh, Muharram is the month in which it is reported that uh, on the 10th of it, the 10th uh, month of the 10th the of, of Muharram, it is said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
saved Musa alayhi salatu wassalam from Fir'aun. The one we just mentioned that happened at the time of Muharram. According to the hadith, when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to, Mac to Medina, and then the Jews, they were fasting at the time of Muharram. And then later on, the Prophet Muhammad asked, why do they fast at the time of Muharram? It is said that they used to fast, the Yehudi, the Jews, they fast at the time of Muharram. And because Allah saved Musa on that day. But the Prophet Muhammad said, Khalas, we are going to fast on that day. And because we are more dearer to Musa. And then he said, in order to differ from the Jews, because the Prophet he, he loved to differ from the Jews and the Christian. They would eat with the left hand, we eat with the right hand. You know, because eating with the left hand, it is accompanied by shaitan. But the Prophet would eat with the right hand, say Bismillah. When the Prophet Muhammad said uh, so he would differ from the Jews and the Christian. And then the Prophet said, for verily the Jews, when they, talk, when, they, when, they, when they eat, they talk a lot. It is part of their religion to speak a lot when they talk. But the Christian, they don't talk at all. The Christian, when they eat, they don't talk. It's part of their religion. Mm -mm. You can't talk when you, when, you, when, you, when you eat with a Christian. But Nabi Sallallahu said, listen, the Christian, they don't talk. The Jews, they talk too much. We don't speak too much and we don't keep quiet too much when we, talk, when we, when we eat. We say some words. Talk a little bit. Don't talk too much and don't keep quiet too much. For Nabi Sallallahu he always wanted to differ from the Jews and the Christian in all matter. For when it comes to this, I want to say, okay, the Jews, they fast on the 10th of Muharram. So we fast either a day before and or a day after in order to differ from them. Therefore, and the Prophet Muhammad said, whoever fast on the 10th of Muharram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sin of one of his previous years. Whoever fast on the 10th of Muharram, which is after a week, inshallah, probably, 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 probably next Thursday, something like that. I'm not sure. I had to check the calendar again because we're saying it's the third or the fourth. And whoever fasts the 10th of Muharram, and I'm going to update that to the group, inshallah. And whoever fasts at the 10th of, the, of Muharram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the year, the past year of his sin. So therefore, it is for the 10th of, of uh, Muharram, it is called Ashura. It is called Ashura. And it is better to fast a day before or a day after, the 9th, 10th, or the 10th, 11th. So you can either fast 9th, 10th, or 10th, 11th, or you can fast 9th, 10th, and 11th, or you can even fast only the 10th, no problem. If you want to fast only the 10th, this also is no problem. Okay, so this is in regards to the Muharram. And one more thing as well in regards to Muharram that we have uh, the sect in Al Islam. They take the first 10 days of Muharram as the first 10 sacred days. They do a lot of bid'ah in these first 10 days. A lot of bid'ah, innovation in the first 10 days of Muharram. That was not there at the time of the Prophet So now if we go back to the, to the hadith or to the seerah of the Prophet in the first 10 days there was nothing special. Only in the 10th they would fast. That's it. Oh, 9th, 10th or 10th, 11th. But some people, they have actually made or they celebrate the first 10 days of Muharram as if they are first the 10 days of sacred days and nights. No, you just, it's not allowed. They bring people and read the Quran the first 10 nights of Muharram. They, they tend to uh, try to uh, replicate of what happened according to 
the incident in Karbala in Iraq of Hassan and Hussein. So these kind of sect, which are called the Shia sect, they may perform many kinds of, 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 of innovation in these first 10 days. You see them hitting themselves. You see them uh, getting bleed, you know, they're bleeding. You see them uh, stabbing themselves. You see them hitting themselves with chain. And this happened in the first 10 days of, of, of Muharram, especially on the 9th and the 10th. And then when you ask them why, they say because on, in this, for, on the 10th of Muharram, uh, one of either Hassan or Hussein was martyred. So this is, uh, even though he was martyred on that day, we have no rights to mourn in this way. So we fast because of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. We've got nothing to do with Hassan and Hussein in these first 10 days. Yes, we love Hassan and Hussein, the Ahlul Bayt, the other people, that are the, the, the most beloved uh, youth, the, 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 the leader of the youth in Jannah, great. But to bring up new ibadah, to mourn their, 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 their death, then this has become an innovation. But guess what? Guess what? Even the Sunni, they do it. They're like, oh, it's Muharram, we have to do this. Right? No, no, no. In Muharram, there's nothing special to be done except that you fast on the 9th, 10th, or the 10th, 11th of Muharram. That's it. This is what Allah, this is what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to do. And we have no rights whatsoever to add or subtract anything in the religion. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. All right. I'll take some questions. Great. Question number one. Is it a sign of the day of judgment that time will go fast? Yeah. It is said that people, is, the time will not go fast. The question is, is it, is, is it sign of the day of judgment that time will go fast? Um, the time will stay the same, but the baraka of the time will be elevated. The barakah of the time will be elevated. But the time is still the same. 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, you know, seven days in a week. <laughs> the days and the time is still the same. Just the barakah will be elevated from the, from the time. Mukhtar, how about, uh, how about, if your friends were non-Muslim, will he be taken away from Jahannam? No. I'm sorry to say that, but whoever did not say La ilaha illallah, it is haram for them to enter Jannah. If your friend did not say La ilaha illallah, it is haram for him to enter Jannah. Therefore, no matter who he is, even if the Prophet Muhammad parents, when he was asked, he was requested to ask Allah for forgiveness for them, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, you can't ask for forgiveness for them, but you can visit their grave. It tells you everything. Question. What about friendship with a male? If you, consider, if you consider them as a brother, can you be friends? Look, this is, this is something that uh, we know that is uh, actually uh, happening in, what you call it, in many places, like universities, uh, colleagues at work, and uh, many kind of, of uh, scenarios, situation happen, especially in the world where we have ikhtilaq, especially in the world where we have, what you call it, uh, mixing going on. But therefore, this is something that we have to be very careful. Like, for example, uh, if ever we know colleagues, we, we, we're living in a world where they've got colleagues, male and female at work. So what we need to do is we need to understand the way of interaction a way of interaction, the way of 
of talking, the way of uh, interacting with people, so the way of of uh, of trusting people, the way of of knowing where does the the limit and the boundaries lies. So usually at work or wherever you can find people, they have meeting together. Then all these kind of things has to always have a barrier. You know what I'm saying? They should have a barrier where you know that uh, you're not let, you're not going to let Shaytan play in between. So therefore. In regard to this one, it's something that even though you might feel that you might take people say it might take someone as friends or as brother and stuff like that. It's something that we need to be uh, pretty careful because many, uh, many times we do say that brother and sister, but then we do get pretty, pretty uh, easy. So this is what happened is when it comes to uh, to the colleague, if you all have if you have colleague at work and then you really had to make meeting, which I know. The place where we are multicultural, we had to try our best to make sure that the barrier is there, and then we can take, we can trust people. But at the same time, we need to have the barrier that Allah has put and the limit in between the uh, different uh, genders. Why are most terrorists Muslim? Why are most terrorists Muslim? Why do they say that they are the Mujahidun and say that they will go to Jannah by killing? <laughs> who, say, who said that most terrorists are Muslim? The couple of people, the couple of people that have actually, even with that proof that has come in the news, so called by the name of Muhammad, by the name of so and so, they they, this is what has been portrayed to us. We cannot say that why are most terrorists Muslim? Abedin. Who is a terrorist? It's someone who creates terror in the heart of people. If I come and I create terror in your house, if I come and I create terror in your society, I'm a terrorist. If someone, if a, if a thief comes into your house, and he creates terror into your house. He's a terrorist. If you got someone, if you got a husband, if you got a, if, if who, who come and create terror in the atmosphere, he's a terrorist. A terrorist is someone who creates terror in the heart of people, of society. Why would people say that majority of the Muslim are terrorists? Abedin. Why don't you call Hitler a terrorist? Why don't you call Donald Trump? Why did you call Bush? Why did you call uh, uh, Sarkozy? Why did you call what you call it? Uh, Tony Blair? Why go all this? How many people have been killing in Iraq? How many people have been killing in Afghanistan? How, oh, no, I don't want to get into politics. But the thing is, terrorists are these kind of people. You cannot say why people, why Muslims are called terrorists. Has you ever, ever heard in history that Hitler was one? What did he do? What's been happening now? The people when they were back in the day in 2001, 2003, when they clear out Iraq, 2005, when they clear out Afghanistan. Why don't people in, 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 uh, in, in Burma, you know, the, over there, they call the people, the, 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 the government there as, as, as terrorists? And what they're doing, they're creating terror to the Muslim community. Eastern China creating terror. Because the thing why people say Muslim are terrorists is because the one or two killing what they have done. It's portrayed in the, in, in the media. Yes or no? You can't say. It. Nobody can say why most terrorists, Muslims are not terrorists. Muslim, and, and no Muslim over here has actually gone out and done something without the intention of retaliation. You shouldn't. Abedin. So therefore, when we say that Muslim or terrorist is because what they call so-called what happened World Trade Center, even now we've got no proof. What they said 7-7, seven, seven, because they've done that for a reason. We're not, we're not justifying what they did. If anyone, anyone by the name of Muhammad or father killed someone, Allah, Allah will deal with him. Whoever has killed someone in the eyes of Allah, it as if he has killed some, the whole of humanity. But the problem is, the problem is, we are here programmed by the news broadcaster 
CNN, BBC, Fox News, Pateki, all these news. Then guess what? They are the one who call and then they say by the name of so-and-so Muslim Mujahideen. They are the one who come and say this. And then what happened? Because we be programmed, because we are living, we are learning Islam from those broadcasting corporation, so we come to know that Islam is a religion of terror. And then, so but I know when you go into the West, this is what you perceive. That's not something that we need to perceive. If one or two person that say that they are going for jihad because they will go to Jannah, if one or two person have done so, why do you pick the black sheep from all the white sheep? That's not something to be done. No. So why I'm talking, because if anyone come and ask you the same question, you have full right to answer the same way. Because if the dunya have been controlled now, you forgot about Israel, you forgot about people, about what's happening, what they're doing now, those are create terror. Go uh, speak to someone who's from Syria, you speak to someone from Palestine, you speak to someone who's from Afghanistan or Burma, they tell you how they live in terror. And when there's terror, so who are the terrorists over there? Then they will tell you. A Muslim never go and create terror in anyone. Go and live in a, go and live in a Muslim country. And then you see how, how secure you are. You're here in Dubai. People now, even though they're not Muslim, they want to prefer living Riyadh and Jeddah. They want to go live in Qatar and Bahrain in a Muslim country because they feel safe. Because they feel safe. But if you go back leaving the West and then you walk at night in the night, what do you feel? You're in a terrorized atmosphere. You feel, you feel scared. Then when you think about it, we are not terrorists. We are the people who are actually coming here by the teaching of Islam to teach love and preach harmony and deal with people with generosity and kindness. Muslim, non-Muslim. The Prophet Muhammad has come here for the whole of humankind. When the Muslim, when, when Umar bin Khattab opened, opened Jerusalem, what did he say? We're not going to crush any of the church. Let them worship. Tell me any Muslim place, many Muslim country now that are giving, are, are giving terror or, 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 or any kind of making the other people facing terror and making them feeling terrified. In the home country, in the country, name me any country. Even though you people say Saudi Arabia, what have you, whatever, people love to live in Riyadh and Jeddah, and they're all Muslim, and they don't feel terrified. They just feel peace. But now you go and live in the West and see what happened. You go and even walk around in America at twelve o'clock, see what happened. Now, 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 I'm going to go out and work out. Now I don't feel any kind of terror. Never going to happen. Once I was in, I was in uh, when I was in the UK, I was parking my car at 11.30 in the night. I got three Irish people came next to me. They wanted to enter the car. Uh, who are the terrorists here? But this is, what, this is, this is, this is how, what we call it. A terrorist is someone who put terror and fear in the heart of people. We Muslim, Wallahi, we don't do that. Sheikh, what about the group like Daesh or ISIS who kills in the name of Allah? The Daesh and the ISIS, let me tell you something. It could be a group or Taliban. I can't even tell you the, the what you call it, the, the history of Taliban, but we're not here to do that. The Daesh or the ISIS, whoever. But let me tell you something. If ever they have gone out, Killing anyone innocently, haram, la juice. It is haram to kill anyone, any innocent, clear cut. No right whatsoever, Muslim, non-Muslim. You have no right to kill anyone. Anyone who does that, then their jaza in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal is Jahannam. No matter how big your beard is, no matter how Kandora, Shoja Kandora is, if you kill anyone, 
if you kill someone who does not deserve to be killed, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with you. They cannot see anyone over here on the street and kill them and say, you know, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, you kill them. No, you do it, haram. You can't, the people who do that, they don't know anything about Islam. When the, when the, when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina, there were the Christian and the Jews who live in Medina. The Prophet Muhammad made a pact with them. And they were like, if ever someone come and attack you, we are going to protect you. Look at that. And who am I to go out and shoot them and say in the name of Allah? Abedin. La. You can't do this. But we cannot go and say that people, but if ever any kind of group come up and then they start killing people by the name of Allah without any reason, Allah will catch them on Yom Al-Qiyamah. No matter what they call them, Mujahid, Mujahid, Shahid, Shuhada, Allah will catch them on Yom Al-Qiyamah. A jihad, you can't just go up like this and then just say, okay, now today I'm the Amir, Khalas, we're going to do one, two, three, four. It's not like this. For you to become a Khalifa, you need to have proper shura. The whole, the ummah, the ulama rabbani, they come together, they agree to give you bay'ah. And then you come up and then you actually be like, okay, we're going to do something that's going to benefit to put the flag of Allah Azza wa on top. But just to go and kill people on the street, no Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, تَقْتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ You, which means that yeah, you, when you get into the battle, this is where they get into the, the issue where the, the, when the non-Muslim, they read that part in the Quran. You know, you, 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 when you fight them on the battlefield, you kill them wherever you find them. That's only on the battlefield. And if ever you catch them as captives, you let them go. Let them go in a security place. But therefore, my brothers and sisters out there, it is a question, it is a question that many, 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 many people ask. Sometimes we get stuck and we don't know how to speak. Sometimes we get stuck, we don't want to speak. And those people that come and they crush it with this kind because you see that on the media. They do the quick and, and very neutral way in order for you to, uh, to answer that. And Allah Ta'ala A'lam. فَسَتَذْكُرُونَ مَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ وَفَوَضُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ شُكْرًا and بإذن الله تعالى it's already 11 o'clock and tomorrow is Jum'ah and uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy upon all of us and to give us tawfiq to be able to raise the flag of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and بإذن الله تعالى tomorrow is Jum'ah and Manar and بإذن الله تعالى tomorrow 4.30 we're going to speak a little bit more about about the hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad sallam more in detail and بإذن الله تعالى see you there tomorrow 45 until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh shukran